Welcome back and thank you for taking time to learn this MS 900 Microsoft 365 Fundamentals Examination course. My name is Sushant Sudish and I am your instructor for this series. We have completed lesson 1 of module 2 and now we are in lesson 2 which is deploying Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus. After this lesson, you should be able to know how to plan a deployment of Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus, the deployment options for Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus, and the update model of Windows and Office 365 Pro Plus. So the two most critical part of planning an enterprise deployment of Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus are assessing your environment's network and making sure that existing hardware and applications will work with the new software. So how do you assess your hardware and application compatibility? Almost all applications written in past 10 years will run on Windows 10. And almost all add-ins and Visual Basic applications, macros that are based on previous version of Office will continue to work on latest versions of Office as well. So the two most critical part of planning an enterprise deployment of Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus are Assessing your existing environment and network and making sure that your existing hardware and application will work with the new software. To support that, Microsoft offers several tools which can help you make sure that your application and hardware are compatible, which include Windows Analytics Upgrade Readiness. Uh, then there is a readiness toolkit for Office add-in and VBA. And then there is a desktop app Azure. The desktop app Azure is a fast track center benefit for Windows 10, which provide the desktop app Azure. So for assessing and optimizing your network, Microsoft have built in method for automatically limiting bandwidth, including reducing the size of update download with express update delivery and binary Delta de Delta compression. How you deploy Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus depends on your business requirement and your environment, including how much administrative control you want over the deployment. Windows 10 include the following new deployment tools and methods. Windows Autopilot, in-place upgrade, dynamic provisioning, and subscription activation. These are very important to understand, so I will take a minute or so to explain each in detail. Windows Autopilot customize the out-of-box experience or OOB to deploy apps and settings that are pre-configured for your organization. In-place upgrade, upgrade a device's operating system without reinstalling. So you can migrate apps, users, data, and settings from one version of Windows to another like going from a Windows 8.1 to Windows 10. Dynamic provisioning, create a provisioning package to quickly configure one or more devices, even those without network connectivity. Subscription activation, use a subscription to switch from one edition of Windows 10 to another. This is by far an easier switch you can make to switch a Windows 10 Pro to a Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. To deploy Office 365 Pro Plus, you first choose what deployment tool to use. There are a few tools available. Configuration Manager, Office Deployment Tool, Microsoft Intune, or you can directly install from Office 365 Pro Plus as well. So I'll take a minute or two to explain each in detail. For enterprise that already use a CCM to deploy manage application software, Microsoft recommend to use Office Deployment as well. Office Deployment tool for organization that don't have a CCM, but still want to manage their deployment. So you can use this Office Deployment tool, which provides control over installation, update, and settings. Microsoft Intune is for organizations that want to deploy and manage Office from the cloud. So Intune provides a cloud-based service that manages mobile devices and PCs along with the application of these devices like Office 365 Pro Plus. And finally, you have an option to install directly from Office 365 Portal. The simplest approach is to have your licensed users self-install Office on their client devices directly from Office 365 dashboard. 
This method requires the least amount of administrative setup, but gives you less control over the deployment. Let's look at Windows as a service model. In the Windows as a service model, Microsoft no longer provides major operating system revisions. Windows updates are an ongoing maintenance task rather than a periodic operating system upgrade project. The Windows operating system receives revisions and update more frequently and they are applied with less disruption and effort. These updates fall into two categories, feature update and quality update. So the feature update are so the feature update, these add new functionality and are released twice a year. These updates can be readily deployed using existing management tools because the updates are more frequent. They are smaller, so users take less time to adapt to changes. Consequently, the workload and cost impact on organization is reduced. Quality updates. These are security updates and fixes, usually issued once a month, on the second Tuesday of each month, which is called Patch Tuesday. And then you can control how and when these updates are applied with servicing channels and deployment rings. So the servicing channels include Windows Insider, semi-annual channel, and deployment rings include Preview, Broad, and Critical. So to give you an update on what is servicing channels, servicing channel is where Windows as a service offers three servicing channels. Each of these channels receive new feature update at different frequencies. With servicing channels, Windows as a service offers three servicing channels, Windows Insider, semi-annual channel, and long-term servicing channel. Each of these channels receive new feature update at a different frequency. These servicing channels provide a method for controlling the frequency at which organizations can deploy Windows 10 features. Deployment rings are similar to groups in your organization might have used to manage updates to earlier versions of Windows. So how do you update your Office 365 Pro Plus? So after you deploy Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus, Microsoft strongly recommend that you keep them up to date as new features and other updates are released. So the types of updates for Office 365 Pro Plus include monthly channel, semi-annual channel, and semi-annual channel targeted. Monthly channel which receive feature updates approximately every month. Semi-annual channel targeted which receives feature update in March and September. This is typically used for pilot users and application compatibility testers. Semi-annual channel, which receive feature update every six months in Jan and July. So to deploy Office 365 Pro Plus to users in your organization, you start by assigning license to your users. Then, each user can install Office 365 Pro Plus on up to five computers. Each installation is activated and kept activated automatically by cloud-based services associated with Office 365. So the key message is you need internet connectivity to activate license and a user can install up to five computers. You need to understand what is a reduced functionality mode as well. In reduced functionality mode, Office 365 Pro Plus remains installed on the computer, but users can only view and print their documents. All features for editing or creating new documents are disabled. That concludes the end of lesson two. We learned about how to deploy Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus, and what are the different options available for updating and deploying Office and Windows 10 as well. In the next video, what we are going to go and see is the third lesson from the module called Microsoft 365 Core Services. The lesson what we are going to see is Unified Endpoint Management in Microsoft 365. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Till then, peace.